Hey, this is Tom Nash, and before we start, don't click nothing, don't smash nothing, and mainly, don't buy nothing. We're starting right now. Hey, thank you for staying with me, and let's talk about Russia first. Russia is having a tough time in Ukraine. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. I think it's time to put the hurt on the Ukraine. I come from Ukraine. You not say Ukraine weak. Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine is game to you. How about I take your little bonus? If you look at the list of achievements that they set out, None of them are really good. Zelensky is still the president. In fact, Russia have made him more popular than ever. He went from being a mediocre politician with somewhat questionable popularity to a goat, to a superstar. I mean, people are writing rap songs about the dude. It's insane. Now, NATO is more united than ever. In fact, new countries are trying to bang on the door. Finland wants in. More countries want in. It's insane. Russia has no friends left politically. Nobody's voting with them. I mean, they're down to Syria, Eritrea, um, Belarus, which is not even a real country anymore. I mean, all their friends are gone. Russia really, you could say, got pummeled here at the United Nations with this vote, with 141 countries voting in favor of the resolution and only five voting uh, against Russia, Belarus, Syria, North Korea and Eritrea. How about Russian oligarchs? They're running for their life. They just lost $120 billion in aggregate over the past week. Yachts and jets seized while inside Russia tonight, the ruble has now lost half of its value. So Chelsea is being sold by Roman Abramovich. He's doing donating the money is like, leave me alone. They're seizing yachts. They're basically going at the necks of these people. And mainly, and that's the most important part, EU and Germany are making a decision to completely diversify gas. They want out, out of Russian gas as soon as possible. And they're basically arming themselves to the teeth, militarizing the whole surrounding area around Russia, which is exactly what Putin didn't want. Germany has backed down on an initial refusal to send weapons to support Ukraine as it battles the Russian invasion. Berlin has now agreed to a major armaments delivery, including anti-tank weapons, surface-to-air missiles and rocket-propelled grenades. The policy shift brings Germany into line with other Western allies supplying weapons to Ukraine. So if you look at it from a strategy perspective, I mean, Russia is pretty screwed. Apple is pulling its products out of Russia. IKEA is temporarily pausing operations in Russia and in Belarus. But right now, the economy is in turmoil. Russia's sovereign debt was downgraded to junk status. On this Russian business channel, this economist drank to the death of Russia's stock market, much to the horror of the host. And even though Russia's economy is a little bit simplistic, basically their whole economy is let's dig things from the ground and let's sell them. There's not a lot of sophistication there. They're still the 11th biggest economy in the world. And the US and the EU just grabbed $400 billion of their money. It's more than half of you know, Russia's war chest. And this war ain't coming cheap. Yeah, bro, this is what it is, you know, bringing back the Soviet Union. Not to mention the fact, as I mentioned, stock market is completely down. We have a guy on Russian TV basically drinking soda, saying RIP the stock market. I mean, no money in the ATMs. The government is now coming out, mandating people to sell their foreign currency, 80% of it, just so the National Bank has some foreign currency to try and regulate the ruble. According to this, like, new executive order has been signed, every single person, every single person that is making money from abroad, basically, they must convert 80% of all of the uh, foreign currency earnings that they've had since the beginning of 2022 to rubles. Which is slowly becoming worthless at this point, like a penny. I mean, this has only been five days, but inflation in Russia has already gone 30, 40, 50 percent, depends who you ask. I mean, for five days, my guy, we're talking about seven and a half percent in the U.S. over the year and we're crying about it. Russia is basically taking a beating, as always. And it's the same case with Russia every time. The politicians and the government is playing stupid games and the citizens that have nothing to do with it end up winning the stupid prizes again and again. This is 1998 all over again. People are going to have a tough time surviving. People that just want to go home, you know, go to work, come back home, have sex with their wife, eat some lunch, do it again the next day, pay their taxes, mind their own business. The same simple people will now have to go through this mess because of some grandiose politicians' war games. Unbelievable. Uh, the UN Secretary General, uh, following uh, those results of the vote on the resolution, uh, said really the UN General Assembly has spoken and the message is loud and clear. He said end hostilities in Ukraine uh, now and open the door to dialogue. And I mean, the UN is a joke. What's the UN doing about it? The Security Council is basically, 
I mean, non-existent. Russia is the president and they have veto over everything. So they can't even pass a resolution basically condemning Russia on the Security Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. But, I mean, my guys, Russia is actually invading Ukraine. Ukrainian people need help. They don't need condemnations. They need actual weaponry, humanitarian support. They need our help. It doesn't help them if you condemn Russia. I mean, imagine some guy burglarizes a home and he's like, uh, police, there's a burglar in my home and he's about to shoot me. And the police is like, yeah, we're condemning the burglar. Well, thank you for that, but I'm pretty much dead now. This is literally what's going on. What does these condemnations have to do with helping Ukraine? I never understood what the UN actually is supposed to do here. Dmitry Rogozin, chairman of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, said on Thursday that Russia has decided to suspend delivering rocket engines to the US in retaliation for sanctions imposed on Russia over Ukraine. In this circumstance, we are unable to supply the United States with our world-class rocket engines. Allow them to fly on anything other than their broomsticks. Now, Russia is trying to fire back a little bit, and I find it a little bit amusing. The head of the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, Dmitry Rogozin, whatever the hell his name is, is basically saying, we're, we're not going to send rockets to the U.S. anymore. Let them fly to space on their broomsticks. My guy, nobody needs your shit. We have flying broomsticks that basically go up and down, land, and we reuse them. It's called the SpaceX stuff. I mean, we no longer need this shit from the 80s and the 90s. We're transitioning to actual privatizing the whole space industry anyways. None of us needs this. In fact, you can take your broomsticks and shove it up your lada. We're getting some disturbing new video. These are live images of something we have just learned about from the Associated Press and Reuters. And these fireballs that you're seeing in the near ground are important and chilling. Here's what we've learned. Europe's largest nuclear power plant, the largest one on the continent, is in southern Ukraine. And this moment, it's reportedly being shelled by Russian troops. And of course, we have to talk about the fact that Russian military decided it's a good idea to shoot shells next to the biggest European nuclear plant. Good idea. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to think that nukes and nuclear energy in Russia is not a good mix. Why do I hate Putin so much? Is he making fentanyl? Does he eat dogs? And for the finale, we had two TV segments basically compete for each other for the most moronic reaction. On the one hand, we had Tucker Carlson with his list of likes and dislikes, why he likes Putin so much. Basically, you know, uh, not selling fentanyl and not eating dogs. I mean, what's going on with Tucker? Jon Stewart obviously tore him a new one. You have to go and watch that. I'm not going to repeat Jon Stewart's jokes. I mean, Tucker Carlson is falling off his rocker. On the other hand, on India, we had a guy scream at the Ukrainian journalist thinking he's an American journalist because he got their names confused and didn't bother to check who's who. You absolutely have to see this bit. Check it out. Oh, well, Mr. McAdams, have, Mr. McAdams, if you are so concerned, if you are so concerned about it's Ukrainians, then, no, no, hang on, hang on. No, no, don't, don't, yeah. don't, Mr. McAdams, tonight, don't, Mr. McAdams, tonight, play. You ask, you ask the African nations because you dumped them. I don't want you go and ask the millions and millions of Iraqi citizens because you dump them. The world's biggest you people, you people have, you people and your colonial out. agenda, sir, has wrecked, you wrecked the South, the has wrecked the South, has wrecked the East. And don't, don't, don't sit here and lecture us. Dear host, I have not said a word yet. I don't know why you're yelling at me. No, I'm not yelling at you. I'm talking about Mr. McAdams. I'm talking about Mr. McAdams. I am Mr. McAdams. Oh, I am Mr. McAdams and I haven't said a word. So stop yelling at me. OK, sorry. I got that confused. I got it's that Ukrainian confused. Ukrainian guy who's going nuts, OK? I, not me. Yes, I got that. I got that. That's Borden Nahalo. And as always, thank you for watching. This was my two cents about what's going on this week. I hope you had a good laugh and enjoyed yourself. You know, prayers and hopes for Ukraine. Those guys are tough as nails. I absolutely love to see their tenacity. And of course, I just hope there's no more loss of life and somehow this thing gets resolved. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this format. If you like it, don't like it. See you next week.